Hi everyone. Well, as promised, I'm going to give you, um, in this video, I'm going to give you an update on all of the little seedlings that I've got in my new greenhouse. And then I'm also going to go around to my late father-in-law's greenhouse where I have some lupins that have been overwintering as well. So that's what this video is going to be about. How to care for and keep healthy um seedlings over the winter um and i've got a little notepad here because i've been taking some down some sort of statistics some facts and figures as to germination and but more importantly watering that i think you'll find really surprising i am i, I can't quite believe how little water these seedlings have had so let's go into the greenhouse and i'll show you how everything's doing So we'll come into the greenhouse now. Um, this is the only heat from the cup of tea that I've got here that these plants have had so far this year. Right, so I'll give you a look around just so that you can see that I haven't moved anything since I took the video of me putting all these trays of seeds in. And apart from this little one that's gone missing and that one there everything else is so beautiful and healthy and i think they have gone missing it's not like they've died because you would see the little seedling dead on the top of the soil it's not that they've died they've been stolen by a little robin or something right so um you might want to jot down these um dates that i'm going to give you in relation to the watering of these plants or rather lack of because i think that is the main difference between what i've done this year and what i've done previous years because i always have planted lots of seeds over winter purely it's just i love growing plants and in the winter, I find it's quite a good time to do that. It gives you a head start in the spring, as long as you can keep them alive and healthy. Um, the other thing is, because it gives you a head start with your plants in the spring, because instead of trying to germinate them, they're actually this size, um, it frees the greenhouse up in spring to plant seeds that uh, aren't suitable for germinating in the autumn and overwintering um, things like um, cosmos which i am determined this year i am going to grow some healthy cosmos because it just everyone says how easy it is and i just can't get away with it and if the ones that do germinate don't do much in the garden so i'm going to crack that anyway on with these figures so i've been on my youtube dashboard and i've looked at the videos that i've put out in relation to everything that's in the greenhouse here and all the lupins and then because i sort of film and then it's a week later that that video goes out i've deducted a week so um the first video that went out what seeds can i grow and i'll put links to all of these videos in the description box below i sowed all of these seeds on the 12th of October and the day that I sowed the seeds I watered all the seed trays in these um in these trays and I kept them in my conservatory um on a carpet to give them some warmth I didn't put them on a heated mat or anything the conservatory wasn't heated um so these seed these young seedlings have been raised in a very sort of harsh environment um they haven't been cosseted at all so i saw them on the 12th of october and i watered them that day um and then on the 9th of november i pricked all of the newly germinated seeds out as soon as they i didn't even wait for some of them to have their second lot of leaves because i like to prick out quite 
quite soon in the life cycle. So I pricked them out and I put them into these modules, these exact modules. And I put the modules into these trays. If you can see these trays that they're in here. So they were watered on the 9th of November. So then there's a video out called The Winter Greenhouse, which went out on the 17th of December. But remember, I videoed it a week in advance. So on the 10th of December, these seed trays, these modules came into this greenhouse. And I can remember pointing out one or two of the little plants that I said, I'm going to keep an eye on them because they look like they could do with a drink of water anytime soon. So I did keep an eye on them. Um, but what happened was it wasn't until last weekend, the, um, the 5th of January, that I gave, I think there was about 10 of them, I gave them a little drink of water. And that's not 10 trays, that was 10 little individual plugs. I gave them a little drink. The other, I would say 90% of these seedlings haven't had a drink of water since the 9th of November. And today is the 13th of January. Um, and I can't, I can hardly believe it. I wouldn't believe it if it wasn't that there's only me looks after the plants. Um, nobody else comes in and gives them a drink or they might come in and think, oh, yeah, it looks lovely, ma'am, but they don't water anything. Um, so I'm going to take the camera off the tripod now and I'm going to show you how moist the trays still are. Now, when I do the, the pickup test, which is if you're unsure, pick your tray up that still has a decent amount of weight to it not as much as i can remember when i first put them into the greenhouse where the soil was obviously very wet so yeah that's still got a decent amount of moisture in it i, I just can't believe it let's have a look at these ones again the same and this is so different to the way i would normally look after the seedlings how I've looked after them in the past so I would come in and if say oh half the the module looked a bit dry I would water the whole lot and quite often I would water from the top and then put a bit water in the bottom and what I've realized over the years is that it's not the cold that gets your seedlings it's the cold and the wet, more importantly, the wet. They can't abide being in soggy, cold water because you've got to imagine that when these tiny little seedlings are, let's have a tray that's not as big as that. So these are Anterinum White Admiral. Now they do feel quite light. But if I do the finger test, it's still moist on the top. But these tiny little seedlings can't possibly take up a load of water. And I can just see, I don't want to tip any out. I don't know whether you can see some little roots coming out the bottom. And you can see how healthy they are. I'm just delighted. I think this greenhouse is actually magic. <laughs> I'm so, so thrilled. Now, look at these ones. These are Ami Majors. Look at the roots coming out the bottom of these ones. But still, having said that, they aren't leggy. They are a very tall plant. They'll probably grow five, six foot tall. Things from the pea family. Um, I haven't grown vegetables, but say you were growing sweet peas they need a very deep root run now i'll show you some ami majors where um they've been in slightly taller modules look at the size of these ones and if you can have a look look at that lovely root system in there but again the top you wouldn't say it was moist, but it's certainly not dry. It hasn't shrunk away from the sides or anything. So I'm going to leave well alone. Um, 
everything else, you know, these lupins, they're small, they're bushy. I'm gonna take the camera off and show you around. Right, so these are Ami Majors. Some of them are much taller than others, but all of them are healthy. If any of these were going, say, yellow at the tips, it would mean that they'd taken all of the nutrition out of the soil and they needed some more food. Even some of the trays of seedlings, now what are these? Yeah, Ami Majus. Um, I've got another lupin germinating there. The one there. A few there coming up. Right, so if we have a look around, the Vabascum, the snowy spires, they're all looking good. Let's have a look and see if we've got any roots coming out the bottom of them. Um, no, I can't see anything there. You can see how moist that still is. They must be drawing moisture from the just general humidity in the greenhouse. Ami Majors. Two types of Antirrhinum here. Very small white admiral there. I must say I haven't got out of my... Oh, now I've noticed three little holes there. Yeah, there's been some bird in here and they've liked the white admiral antirrhinum rather than the apple blossom. Now these, these ones here I would say are a bit leggy and what you can do in that case is you can just nip out. I should have my little snips. That's it. You just snip off the big tallest leggiest leaf. Um, but as I say, they're really tall plants anyway, so I'm not worried about them. These are apple blossom, foxgloves. And you can see they haven't put on loads of growth because you don't want them to put on lots of growth at this time of year. The 13th of January, up here in the north east of England, our winters usually are the worst in February. So I don't want all of these little plants, you know, growing out of their modules very quickly. I'm pleased that they haven't got lots of roots coming out the bottom, but I'm quite confident that they've got roots, a good root system within there, because otherwise that wouldn't look so healthy. Um, right, what else have we got? got another tray of white foxgloves that have germinated there some more antirrhinum these are doing quite well in these little little pockets you know if they were desperate for a drink they would have keeled over by now so yes i am delighted um with the stage that these little plants are at those tall um, Ami Majors, I may pot those up into nine inch pots that I think they're with what was four, eight, 12. There's a dozen there that have grown really tall. I'll nip the tops out and pot them into nine inch pots and put them on a shelf. But the rest of them, I think, just leave as is. They're doing absolutely fine. Um, and as I've said, it's just this is so not what I'm used to in the past. I've had great success germinating the seeds um, in the pure vermiculite. But then it would get to this stage where um, I would take the seedlings out of their vermiculite and put them into the module trays um, where I would have the problem when they went into soil um, because I would get a lot of damping off. I could lose trays of seeds and damping off, um, it, it's when your seedlings, they look healthy one day and you come in the next day and they're completely limp. They just lie on top of the soil um, and they go sort of white and mouldy and, and it sort of spreads throughout the tray. Um, and the other thing would be that, um, unlike these little trays, I would have lots of green mould on the top of the soil and it would go right up to the, the stem of the plant. Um, 
so not not good and I could never understand how to sort of solve the problem and it would be so frustrating because they had been so healthy um, so the main things that I've done differently which I think have um, done away with that problem so far because everything can change and I will show you if something changes fingers crossed it won't they'll just continue to be healthy um, is that I don't water from the top anymore I water from the bottom I give them far less water as we've just discussed um, than I ever have in the past um, and ventilation in the greenhouse so when it was sort of below freezing in the past um, I would have closed the other greenhouse that I use up and obviously there's no sort of fresh air in the greenhouse whereas with these seedlings as I've said um, even when it's freezing outside I've opened the windows I've opened the doors and it's been like that all day and then on a night time I would close the greenhouse so it's much easier having the greenhouse in my garden. So yes, that's what I'm realising. It's not the cold that's, that's been the, the enemy here. It's been the wet more than anything. So my little seedlings, they can withstand these really freezing cold temperatures. It is the, um, it's the wet that was the problem and when I said I watered about 10 of these little plugs from the top the only reason I did that was because um, I couldn't do anything else without I couldn't water from the bottom without soaking the whole of the tree um, so that's why I watered some individually from the top and obviously everything that I'm discussing now relates to caring for these seedlings in a winter greenhouse, caring for them in a summer greenhouse, totally different set of rules. My winter greenhouse is always, I would say, more full. It's, I use it more in the winter than I do in the summer because in the summer I find the greenhouse just gets too hot and sometimes I have to take everything out. So I'll use my greenhouse from, say, October onwards but then really June July August beginning of September I have very little in the greenhouse then I don't grow veg don't grow tomatoes or anything like that and it's too hot for the plants that I grow but I make great use of it from October until say late May um, it's always full so right just to recap um, I watered the seed trays when I first sprinkled the seed on, on the 12th of October. And then I watered the seedlings when I pricked them out into the modules um, on the 9th of November. And 90%, maybe even 95% of these plants haven't been watered. They haven't been given a drop of water since and it is now the 13th of January. And there's one um, major caveat, obviously, to everything that I've said there. As soon as I, in the past, would have started interfering with the growing process. So in the past, sometimes I've put trays of young seedlings on heated mats. Now, as soon as you interfere like that, the compost starts drying out because obviously you're giving it bottom heat and it will dry out sometimes you know on a daily basis I've watered them in the past um, so I haven't done that this year and this is the result um, the other thing is that as soon as the temperatures start to rise and we up in the northeast of England here it's been down almost to freezing now for weeks usually below freezing particularly overnight um, but as soon as the temperatures rise so as soon as we get into say March and you get a lot of nice sunshine it might seem chilly outside but the sunshine is coming down and in the greenhouse it will heat up very quickly then you have to be very observant on a daily basis um, because the sun, the heat from the sun will dry these out. We have a very sort of um, beautiful but very weak 
winter sun up here um so i'll show you what it was like earlier on today actually what um, monty and i wandered down to the beach um it was very rainy very very cold i'll put a little clip in of that so right we'll go around to the other greenhouse and i'll show you the lupins now right so we're gonna go into my other greenhouse now got a secret garden around here so this is my late father-in-law's greenhouse it's a bit bigger than mine this one is eight by ten um and the benches are always covered with loads of plants so I'm overwintering a lot of things. I've got a nice grass that I'm overwintering there. And I've got some nice box. Um, interesting thing about the box, um, because I tried to grow that in the conservatory. And I thought some cat had come in and sprayed because I could just smell cat pee every time I went in the conservatory. And box smells of cat pee. So don't grow it in your conservatory. Keep it outside. You can't smell it in this greenhouse. Um, got a lovely little viola there. I know I digress, but um, this is the first time I've been in here for a week. So, nice little heuchera. I've got lots of foxgloves. Got a lovely little um, rose-scented geranium there. But what I've brought you in here to see is um, are all the lupins. Um, so, I'll put a link to me sowing the seeds of the lupins and pricking them out and the soil that I use and everything because I used garden soil for all of these. So I'll just give you a bit of background detail on why I'm growing so many lupins just in case you think I'm just a general crazy gardener. Um, so for years, decades probably, every now and again I would invest a lot of money in buying substantial lupins and the slugs just decimate them i have so many slugs in my garden i won't use i don't like killing them i won't use pesticides won't use slug pellets because obviously we've got children the grandchildren running around we've got dogs running around there's lots of wildlife i get a little fox coming through i won't use slug pellets um so last year my sister who grows them annoyingly easily it seems um she gave me a load of seeds and i'd sowed the seeds using soil from my garden um i'll put all the links to these videos in the description box below or you can go on playlists and have a look there i think one's called success with lupins or something um maybe wishful thinking but anyway that's why when you look at these lupins, there are a lot of other little plants coming up as well and some weeds. It's because I've grown them in um, garden soil. So all of these lupins, and I must have hundreds, I'm going to plant en masse throughout the garden and surely some will stick. Out of all of the lupins that I've grown in the past, um, I've got two clumps of lupins and they're not very big clumps to start with. Um, but these have cost me nothing. I got the seeds from my sister and the, um, I haven't had to buy compost or anything. It's all just very natural. The good thing about growing young plants in the soil that they're going to go back into is they won't take, they won't have that shock of transition from say shop bought compost, um, growing medium into your garden soil. Um, Right, so I'll take, I hope the light's okay here, I'll take the camera down and we'll have a look and see how these are doing. So I must say I'm very pleased with them. Um, you'll notice as well, so this is your normal lupin and even the ones that don't look particularly um, well, like these ones, the leaves are still nice and green and I know for a fact that the roots in there will be great and it's the roots that I want to keep healthy rather than the top foliage at the moment. So there's your, na your normal lupin. Um, and these ones here, these are tree lupins and I think these are bright yellow. 
and they don't I don't think they do grow as big as a tree. She um Kathleen said, my sister said that they grow like a large shrub. So I'm hoping to plant some of those in my front border outside the front of my house. So again, if you look in here, we've got foxgloves. I think that's a weed. Take him out. Um, and that's the little loop in there, but nice and green and healthy. Um, I did come in a while ago and de-weed a lot of these. Um, that's got a lily in it. Now he doesn't look. He doesn't look very well there. Obviously that looks dead until you look down here. And that's a lovely little healthy cluster of leaves there. Got a little bit of green mold growing on top. That doesn't matter. I'll give you another close-up of this one. Again, the top leaf, not brilliant, but you wouldn't expect that this time of year. But look at all the no lovely new foliage down here. And just like all those little white seedlings in the other greenhouse, I don't want these growing too big too quickly. Um, outgrowing their pots and things. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have some gorgeous little foxgloves here. I'm just delighted with them. They're so healthy. And again, I've kept everything on the dry side. Um, I think I've just killed with kindness in the past. Let's have a look. Yeah, lovely. And my garden is very cottage garden anyway. So the fact that I'm be planting these lupins and they'll have like a gazillion foxgloves going in as well. Now, I've picked him up. He's very light. But, um, but again, super healthy. I'm not going to water him. I'm going to do the exact opposite of what my natural instinct tells me to do. Because that hasn't fared well in the past. So that's your normal lupin. And this one here is the tree lupin here. Again, lovely and healthy all bushing out here i will have to get on the phone to kathleen and say what do you do with these tree looms do i need to cut them out like you would a wallflower cut the top off so it bushes more from the bottom um hopefully she'll know and i think she got her tree looms from her daughter's house um and that's the lovely thing about being a gardener i love I love all my plants. I love buying plants anywhere. But the ones that you get from people who you love or just are friends with and you admire their skills, um, they're the special ones in your garden. Now these here look dead, but these are aces, baby aces, which I took pity on the way in um, a supermarket. And lots of supermarkets for health and safety reasons don't water the plants. So I bought I bought a whole load of these little aces. I need them like a hole in the head. But um so there we go. Um I hope you can still see me there. Uh, let's see what time it is now. It's half past four in the evening um, and we've really lost the light now. But I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um I'm delighted but very surprised. Um, it's funny, but making these videos for you and viewing my garden and my greenhouse, the plants in them, through the um, lens of a camera, um, has really made me focus more on uh, what I'm planting, where I'm planting it, how I'm looking after it. It's made me look after my plants more um, because I thought when I started the channel, I would show you everything, all the... Um, the things that I've done well, the things that I don't do well, um, because that's just what real gardening is like, isn't it? Even when you've got experience with the plant, sometimes, you know, it'll get vine weevil or something like that. But uh, fingers crossed, all these little plants do well and um, come back and visit my channel and have a look at my other videos that I'll be putting out soon. So until next time, bye. Thanks for watching. Monty's loving it. He doesn't care that the sun's not shining, do you? <laughs>
too rough to swim in that though. Extremely wet day. <laughs> but very, very beautiful. Okay. Do you want me to throw your ball? 